Um, I'll get Michael to explain explain it again. It, maybe it, it, it's sure. it's yeah. Um, so welcome to the DSC call. We've unfortunately been a super busy and behind on everything and we haven't got a huge amount prepared but of course we've got the awesome people like jody and michael and mikey um here to share all their insights um on this call so michael maybe do you want to kick us off with the question you posed and yeah. we'll, we'll go from there yeah that sounds good uh my question is and and you can see uh for, for the attendance for this call in the past couple of calls uh consistent pattern um you know, we, we still have a thriving community, but attending this call is not convenient for everyone. Um, and the question I wanted to kind of put on the floor was, should we consider uh, for some period of time merging the DSC community call into the PowerShell community call? And the intention would be that there's usually about 100 people on that call. So a, a larger group would get to see what's going on with DSC and DSC v3 and that there's resources still getting contributions and things like that. Um, I think that's the main intention really is, is it, it reaches what we the, the consequence is we wouldn't have the same duration of conversation focused on DSC the way we've enjoyed for the past year, but we would reach more interested people. So I just wanted to put it on the floor and, and see what your feedback is. Gotcha, Jody or anyone, 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 any thoughts on that? What, what was your, yeah, what's your take? What's your impression? You know, I think there's value in both. Like, I think that there's value in having a separate call that's more focused on, you know, DSC. But I think ultimately, um, it helps the community to broadcast it to a larger audience. So in that way, I think the PowerShell community call brings like a lot of strengths. Uh, a lot of strengths there too. Um, and maybe um, I have attended the PowerShell community call a little bit less frequently um, than Mikey or Michael, um, but I'm curious like how many people are attending both calls anyways. Um, and that would be sort of uh, something that would be more convenient. Good call out. Anyone from the community got any thoughts on, on do, you, do you attend both calls typically? Um, are you able to make it to both calls? Is this, or do you, you know, what's your desire from the DSC calls that you would worry you wouldn't necessarily get if it was merged into the PowerShell calls if you if you do attend both or if you've got specific sort of, you know, a, a need from having these DSC calls? What do you know, what do you need out of them? What What is the most value for you? I appreciate it. we've only got a small number of people so if you, if you don't really have much of an opinion that's absolutely fine um or if you just got a few thoughts chuck it in the chat or just come off mute and say say hi anything you've got to, to share would be be useful i think for, to guide the team mikey any thoughts i think at least doing uh like the release overview during the powershell community calls probably a good idea anytime we've done another release um, cause we don't have too much time there. So what we can do is like overview and then tell people who want a deep dive to come to this one, uh, if we're going to maintain both side by side. Um, cause this one also, I think serves an important, uh, uh, function for the community for like, I'm working on PSDSC resources and I want to talk to people about like what's mm -hmm. going on with those. And I just don't know that there'll be enough time to cover that in the main community call. So I think this still serves an important function, but I think we could do an overview of uh, the team related changes to DSC, particularly for V3. So is there a sort of a space for maybe changing the cadence of the DSC, the DSC community calls and then saying, look, everything we will still will merge with the as part of the PowerShell community calls, but we maintain a, a different cadence in the DSC community to cover more deeper dive stuff, more specifics. Is, is that maybe consideration or a possibility or? Yeah, I, I think it might be good to do the, the overview stuff in the main call. And then if like we have an extended demo um, or something like that, that might fit better here. Um, and if people know that that's coming, they'll have more incentive to come to this one. And we can maybe get that attendance back up. Because I think there's also a lot of people on the main call who probably are less interested in DSC. 
uh, they're using other tools. So, yeah, it would be. I mean, Michael, what's your your take? I mean, obviously, I, I hear you. We uh, with the you know we want to get DSC more visibility um, because it is well used and it's actually massively well used internally which i keep you know yeah. getting large amounts of people <laughs> reaching out to me saying hey can we get this fixed can we get that, that fixed and and um this is on the obviously the resources side so maybe yeah there's 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 some value in both i think maybe yeah and i like your idea of, of adjusting the cadence that makes sense like maybe we um adjust you know from six to 10 weeks or something like that. Um, that might be interesting. And then I actually really like the idea of uh, the things we talked about on the power show call for DSC should also be leaders to this call. So like we should also say on the DSC community or on the power show community call, the next DSC call will be on this date. The topics will be, and, and we don't have to drag it out, but that would let people know, you know, that, uh, where to go for gotcha. the deep dive. Yeah, that makes gotcha. sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It does. That does sound jetty. Oh, I was just going to say, I think there are a couple of comments in the chat too mm. um, around still having the DSC meeting, you know, once or twice a year to have a more focused meeting. So yeah, it's a great call out. We could try to um, adjust the cadence if that would be helpful, like maybe every couple of PowerShell community calls, there's one like quarterly, or if this cadence doesn't work for people, um, we can make it like less frequent. Um, yeah, thanks for the comments in the chat. Okay. Yeah, so it does sound like there's a bit of, bit of um, value in investigating that. Maybe we could put a quick drop a form together to say, would you prefer to have, you know, change the cadence three monthly, six monthly, once a year. I mean, once a year feels like it could be a, a little bit of a gap. I mean, especially the, the, the DSC team's moving. There's probably a lot that's going to happen in three to six months. So, um, you know, you guys are doing a lot of work, right? So having, a, having to, to wait for a year if there's something really big that needs to come up with the community. Um, Michael, do you know from a on the PowerShell call, what sort of time slot might be available to DSC? To I think discuss it's things? flexible. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we can kind of, I think we're going to get whatever we ask for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll, you know, that, that could be, so we could maybe sort of allocate and say, look, we got 15 minutes and we will, what are the, you know, top things we need to land or messages or, or updates that need to go out? Um, Michael, you jo and Jody, uh, are you go? Are you both typically on the on the PowerShell calls? I know Jody, you said only sometimes, yeah. but yeah, yeah, I happen uh, occasionally, but would definitely um, uh, come if these get combined. Yeah, gotcha. Anyone, anyone else got anything uh, aside from what what's in the chat? If you got any thoughts, feel free to drop some stuff in the chat, um, and we can. Once uh, Gail, I'll go pull pull a co-pilot summary out for Gail and <laughs> uh, drop it drop it through to him and and Johan and and say this is what was was discussed and um, they can sort of weigh in as well. And if we've got anyone else who watches the videos later and they've got a thought, maybe just drop it in the PowerShell DSC um, Discord slash Slack channel and and pop your thoughts through to myself, Gail, Michael. Jody, anyone, anyone on the team, and we'll sort of co try and collate those. Maybe we put a quick form together and say, what would you prefer? Can we do a questionnaire? <laughs> that, yeah. Cool. Okay. With that in mind, um, do we have any updates from the DSC team? Mikey, I know yeah. you've got something. <laughs> I'll uh, uh, drop the uh, note here. So I just, <laughs> about 15 minutes before this call, Got the uh, Alpha 5 uh, reference docs and change log out uh, so you can see what's changed since Alpha 4. Um, some of the bigger things that I think people will like is you can now write resource manifests in YAML. So if uh, dealing with arrays and objects in JSON makes you sad, uh, it'll be a little bit easier. Um, uh, yeah, we wired up uh, parameters for configuration documents. So that section always existed uh, in the configuration document, but 
didn't do anything. Uh, now it does. So now you can supply, uh, you can override parameter values um, when you call DSC config get set and test and export. Um, speaking of export, this is a cool one. Um, so there's now support for uh, using the export command with PowerShell DSC resources to make your uh, PSDSC resource uh, able to participate. All you need to do is add a static method called export that returns an array of, um, of instances of that class. So export, for those who aren't familiar, is sort of a get all. So not every resource can uh, support this. Like you wouldn't want to do this for uh, file or registry, right? You don't want to enumerate every file and folder on your machine. But uh, for things where there's a known limited amount, like app pools or um, uh, users or whatever, right? Something that that uh, is going to have a smaller number of um, uh, instances on the machine and you want to get all of those instances, you can run the export command. And what that'll output is a configuration document that has all of the instances of that uh, resource type. So um, you'd often see this uh, when people are, are wanting to like say, oh, I know I have uh, you know this web server set up. I want to find out uh, what the current configuration is for the app pools um uh, and for the sites and everything else so you could just export all of that and then review it decide which parts of those are really critical to you um delete the other keys because you don't care about managing those and then now you have something to start from so instead of like trying to investigate every single piece of your uh infrastructure you could have dsc tell you uh what the current settings are um one thing i'll say is that people are often tempted to just do that export and then say, well, this is what good is, and then try to apply that or build a new machine with it. Uh, I've worked with a lot of people in the past who have tried to do similar things with different tools. Bad idea. Uh, current does not mean correct, uh, is what I'll say. Uh, current also doesn't mean repl replicable uh, necessarily. Just because that's the way it's set up doesn't mean that like you know splatting that into a new machine is going to work the way you expect. But it is a really useful tool, um, and it will work with PowerShell DSC. A uh, couple other things that you might care about, and then we'll do questions. We added a prototype adapter for WMI, so now you can query uh, and set uh, anything that is settable uh, for WMI through DSC. By default, this adapter is turned off because when you run DSC resource list, it will enumerate all of the WMI uh, types that it can manage, and that might be frustrating for you. You might not want to list 1,700 uh, resources when you're trying to like look at the list of, well, what can I manage? That might not be helpful. Um, there's instructions in the change log for how to enable it. It's just renaming the JSON file right now. Um, speaking of uh, configuration, again, the last really neat thing is there's a new environment variable. So you can uh, now in your configurations reference the DSC config root environment variable. Uh, with a configuration function. Uh, if you're familiar with the ARM template functions, it's um, more or less the same sort of thing. And then what that'll let you do is it'll uh, it'll interpolate the um, root folder where your DSC configuration file is. And so you can reference other files uh, underneath that path without having to you know, uh, try to hard code full paths around in your configuration. So you could ship a folder that has um, like if you needed to copy a configuration file somewhere, right? Or you had a script or something that needed to get dropped somewhere, you can reference those in your configuration now. Um, so that should be really helpful going forward. I think those are the big things. So open for questions. I was going to ask about the WMI, but you explained that. So I was. <laughs> Pleased to, hear, pleased to hear that, um, Michael. You you mentioned in the chat about the um, about resources needing to be designed for export. Um, do you have any tips <clears throat> for us resource creators and maintainers? <laughs> um, it's mostly so. So uh, I imagine if you chew on this for some time, you're going to think of many resources where export might never make sense. Um, and in other cases, there's cases, uh, that's what it's cases. In other cases, um, if you look back across script-based resources, not the script resource, but script-based resources, sometimes get the hash, the properties on the hash table don't perfectly line up with set. 
So you can think about it like instead of one, one way you would kind of think about it originally was like, <clears throat> it's kind of the way that I started tackling this was, well, shouldn't I just be able to run get and whatever comes back, I can just pass that in to another machine and run set and I should more or less get the same thing. And in a bunch of test cases, that wasn't the case either because, you know, DSCV one and two, we didn't really use get for that much. So in many cases, it wasn't consistently implemented. Now, if it's a class-based resource, it's more likely because the class itself actually enforces the schema um, lines up. So we kind of took that learning. And then um, there's also a bunch of cases, like just learning from Nick in reverse DSC. You know, if you're like exporting, I think IIS is an interesting example that Mikey gave. When it comes to recreating that environment, you have to be fairly knowledgeable to take what was exported from the original machine and craft a configuration for the next machine because you need to know, you know, the features got to be installed before the website can be created and the content's got to be in the right folder. And if you're going to manage the certificates, they have to be, you know, the site has to be there to be configurable, things like that. Um, so that was an interesting learning. And then there was also cases where we thought some of these will never, ever make sense, like registry. You would never want to do registry <laughs> exports and get every <laughs> single registry key exported out to JSON. That wouldn't make sense. So those were really interesting learnings. Um, so this whole exercise has been a, a, um, a good one for the health of the DSC V3 overall. And uh, I wanted to give Steve Lee a lot of credit that, you know, a lot of this is happening because of partners like Jody with Machine Config and Demetrius with Winget. Um, as we're having conversations about partner requirements and what they're driving, Steve has been pretty disciplined about going out to the DSC repo and opening issues, commenting on issues when decisions are made. Uh, Mikey has uh, contributed a lot there as well. So... That's one thing, you know, as far as the um, the community call and keeping up to date with DSC B3, uh, I, I don't want to repeat this every call, but I guess I will. Like, I, I definitely encourage everyone to go take a, it's just github.com slash PowerShell slash DSC. So easy to remember. Uh, but that issues list has been really active, especially the last 30 days. Um, and, and to call out a good example, one that we would really love some feedback on is uh, managing reboots really active conversation mm -hmm. on that because what we're starting to think about is because Winget is encouraging us to think about uh, running as a user context, not always as a system context. And then there's all the things, right? Like sometimes you need to elevate and sometimes, you know, all these weird things. Um, we're thinking about reboots as well. If you're running in user context, there's actually a bunch of these things and they aren't just reboots. They're like, Maybe you need to restart a service. Maybe you need to restart Explorer. Like really weird edge cases that, that are pretty great to see getting discussion in the issues list. So I'll get off my soapbox. Thank you. No. Uh, is that this issue here? The um, the one issue 50 handle resources that require restarts? I've just posted the link, I think. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So any anyone who's got a got a thought on that, comment on that. Yeah. Sharing that sharing that issue. We should um uh, I just pulled down the latest code and rebuilt on my machine this morning and we'll start doing a, a fresh round of validation. But I know Steve is hoping to have another actual release uh within the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned on that one as well. Awesome. No promises, but that's the plan. No, what you, you know what's going to be in it? <laughs> any any particular uh, things that you're calling out? The biggest, well, there, there's a whole bunch of things that you can kind of see through the PR discussions, but um, one big thing that Mikey and I have been chewing on a lot is, uh, I, would, I would describe it as like standardizing input-output. So... Um, with V3, there's this interesting concept of uh, thinking about things as a resource, a group of resources, or a configuration. And 
at any point in time, as you move between those, whether you're saying DSC resource activity, DSC group you know, activity or DSC configuration activity, you should be able to expect to pass in information and get information back in a pretty predictable way, um, which sounds easy, but like, until you really get into it and it turns out, you know, what you would get back from a configuration might actually be a bit different than what you'd get back from a resource. And especially whenever there's groups involved and things start getting into hierarchies. Um, so lots of interesting toys to play with right now in, in that realm. Fantastic. So we'll keep an eye out for over the next few weeks. Maybe, hopefully it will drop. No commitments from. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Yep, Copilot will put that in the uh, in the summary. Um, Gail did uh, make a comment, even though he can't make it. He he did make a comment about DSC resource common. So obviously, uh, on that um, discussion around class based resources, obviously there's a lot of resources out there that are still um, script based uh, slash with a moff. Um, a lot of the community resources, probably most of them. I'd say 80, 85 percent are still MOF based. We'd love to move them to class based, and that's definitely on the on the high priority list, along with moving to PES to V five. Um, those, if anyone does want to help out, you know they've got a bit of experience with class based and that conversion. Definitely would love to help. As always, any help with the resource, the community resources, either reviewing, bug fixing, anything, it all, all helps. Um, but what Gail was saying is we have a, he's, he's, um, there is a, if you're not aware that the, the community resources typically use a, a shared module called DSE resource common, which contains a lot of helper functions to, to do a lot of the common processing that most resources deal with. And there is a couple of functions in there like test DSE parameter state and a couple of related functions around that which compare the state of uh, basically you take generate two hash tables and that will compare the state of the parameters that are, that appear in those hash tables. Um, those are, were not typically well, didn't work that well with class based. And I think Gail and, and Raymond, uh, who is doesn't look like he's on the call, have been doing a lot of work to upgrade that. So if you are sort of going, ah, oh, well, it's going to be a bit of a harder journey to move to class based uh, without that and you're waiting on that, that hopefully will be available for you and you'll be able to more easily make that move is there any other is it just as a is anyone here maintaining resources uh either in the community or out there on their own and you know in, in sort of some private or public repos okay yes and nope <laughs> yep do you any of you use class based? How many how many of you make the move to class based, or are you still script based and moth? Mikey doesn't anymore. Mikey, you get you ditched it. Yeah, I'm just reading the. I'm a writer the, now. The, um, you're right. You don't touch <laughs> touch code now. I'm at least not, um, I'm not the person that gets called. So. That would be and so so for um for you guys who who's using MOFs, have you um do you use the DSC um the DSC parameter state uh or DSC common DSC resource dot common module? And if so, have you do you is, is that a blocker for you to move to class based or is it just time to get the work done to do the class based conversion or are you not planning class based conversion at all? So Mikey had um, completely migrated to class based. How obviously, yeah, you've you've written a lot on on that process anyway. And I think Gail <laughs> has as well. Um, but yeah, the plan is to move to to class based. I think for most people, Michael, is there any um, obviously if there if there is a in future versions of DSC, we're going to see support from off based, right? Yeah, um, yeah. For a while, well, that's the plan. <clears throat> yeah, um, that's the plan. But there will be at some point a real motivating uh, factor to get us all to go to class based. So I'm wondering if we we almost need to. Uh, do we have any? You know, if you use class based, you get these massive advantages. And we know a a from a code perspective, they're much more elegant. They are, you know, you don't have to worry about keeping them off and the the script synced and all those sorts of challenges. Do you see any other advantages going to to class based? 
it's <clears throat> I'm coming at this from a very biased point of view. Um, for me personally, I save significant time. And that's because of just building muscle memory. Like I, I can probably do a class based resource in about half the time. And it's because I don't I, like the once I've done parameters, it's done. I I plug in uh, my three methods that are just going to reference private functions. I go do my work in my private functions and I don't have to worry about creating a, a schema moth. So um, and then like if I. I don't I don't have to look up, you know. Validating lists, I can do emails. Like there's a whole bunch of things, <laughs> but um, it 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 <clears throat> the first time I did it, it probably took me four times longer because I had to figure out all those things. Um, now it saves me considerable amount of time. So my muscle memory is to just, oh, I don't need a moth. I don't I don't I don't need a DSC resources folder and a version of life stuff. It's just PSM one. Drop in the class, drop in the private functions, PSD one manifest done. Um, so I save a lot of time there. But gotcha. I do have one comment on the common module. Um, uh, someone brought it to my attention that it uh, web administration DSE wasn't working in machine configuration. So I spent some time deep diving on that. And in the common module, there's an assert module function that uh, just checks to make sure the module is available on the machine. And if not, then it uh, ejects out early, which is a great idea. Uh, in machine configuration, it's running in the context of PowerShell 7.2. And so um, loading modules that were shipped in Windows as part of PowerShell 5.1 will work, but it's using something called implicit remoting, which is where uh, 7 basically goes, oh, I don't have this, but you've got 5.1 and 5.1 has it, so I'll just use that. Um, so that fix is easy because uh, within that workflow, I, I could just submit a PR for consideration that does a skip addition check whenever it's looking for the module um, on a get module. Right now it's get module, and then it checks in with get module list available. And in addition to list available, it could just do skip addition check, and that would fix that. But then there's a second problem, which is... Um, I have to go back and validate this, but I vaguely remember when we were working on uh, machine configuration earlier on that we decided not to include system 32 and PS module path for the agent. And that way there wouldn't be conflicts between the modules coming from there and the modules that were in the package. I don't remember if I'm imagining that or not, but that would, if, that would be very consistent with the other symptoms that I'm seeing where like even whenever it does detect it in PS remoting, it's still not loading up the module. And I think I just need to adjust PS module path. And if so, I need to figure out whether to do that in the common module. Cause ideally you do it in the common module and then like web administration benefits, but so does everything else that uses the mm -hmm. common module. So I just wanted to, for everybody who's a maintainer for common module, kind of put that on your radar that you'll see some chaos coming for me pretty soon. And that's the context. I feel like, yeah, I, I feel like uh, Gail and Johan were doing a couple of changes on common module recently for some, mo for module loading. I felt like those came across uh, a little while ago, but I don't know if they were related or, or just, having to happen at the same similar time but yeah hey we'll deal with the with the with the chaos when we um when we when we encounter it hopefully it'll be fine cool well has anyone anyone uh got anything they'd like to bring up share ask any challenges you're facing Waiting to see if anyone's typing in the chat. I will, of course, call out. Um, <laughs> we, we, um, we really uh, need, still need lots of help with the DSC community resources. I think everyone's, um, you know, I think no one in the world is not stretched at the moment. But we've got, um, yeah, we've got lots and lots of resources, and they keep we keep adding to them, <laughs> which makes the challenge larger. Um, if you do have a bit of spare time, you've got a bit of DSC knowledge. Every re most most of these resource, um, uh, you know, the big ones are all needing lots and lots of help. And of course, moving to class based in to five is definitely high up there on the list because once we do those things, maintenance becomes easier and cheaper. Um, so 
yeah, if you do have a bit of time, you want to sit in front of the TV and do a bit of PowerShell, uh, it's quite soothing. Michael said, right, once you've done it four or five times, it's it's like you don't even have to think about it. So um, I really want to get onto it myself. But if you do, don't know, this is the, I'll just drop the link to the community resources as well. Uh, Shogi, there's a question about using uh, the managed identity of a VM to reach out to a package in um, Azure Blob Storage for non-ARC environments. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, thanks she needs all the votes the that question. she can get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, thanks for thanks for bringing this up. So um, we have planned work for the semester right now um, where we're planning on um, leveraging a user assigned the user assigned identity um, associated with the VM to give our uh, service access to um, a package that's stored in, in Azure Blob through the managed identity. Um, we know this has been a huge problem across both Azure and Arc, and we've decided to um, split the release between Azure and Arc because of the uh, lack of support on Arc for user assigned identity right now. Um, I don't have an ET at this time, but Lars, if you're interested, I can reach out to you once we have more details around what this will look like. Um, would love to get your feedback as we as we go here and, and get you looped and do a private preview as soon as possible. But thanks so much for bringing that up. That's a great point. Oh, I guess if there's nothing else, does everyone want time back in you? <laughs> I have uh, got one. Uh, Mikey, I have go one for plea for people who are writing and maintaining uh, PSDSC resources, particularly if they're aimed at uh, V2 and earlier. Please make sure that your test method calls your get method to get the current state, uh, and then does the comparison. Um, when I did the integration at Puppet, uh, one of the things that I struggled with enormously was uh, resources that implement get one way and test another way, because higher order tools which will now include uh, DSC v3, amongst others, um, they're going to trust what get returns, and they're going to uh, hope that that is correct. And if you're judging state differently between those two, that can be a real problem. And the other thing that I would say uh, is it may also be useful for you to um, make sure that your set method calls test, and then if test returns true, just return immediately instead of processing. Um, I found that that helped out with a lot of resources. Um, it's just those those two things. Uh, so make sure that your test uh, implementation always calls your get implementation, and that set uh, calls test if you're supporting v2. Awesome, good guidance. I think not all community resources do that, so that's something we we work on uh, actively. So if you see it, call it out, and we'll um put on the put it on the raise it as an issue on the repo, and we'll we'll try and get on to fixing that. Cool. Shall we wrap it up then? Awesome, everyone. Thank you all for um, for coming along. I will upload the video into on, onto the YouTubes, and um, yeah, anything you would like to add, drop it in the chat, drop it in the Discord, drop it in the uh, in Slack, and we'll um, take that on when we make it. You know, when when the community puts together the the going forward schedule and how um, whether we roll in um, into the PowerShell uh, team, not into the team, into the into their community call. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Have a great Thursday or Wednesday or whatever the day of the week is. Thanks, Danielle. Bye. Cheers, everyone.